Art in Bloom is an event that's done across the country at different museums. This is our second year of Art in Bloom at the Everhart Museum. It gives designers an opportunity to interpret our collection through floral design. Some of the pieces are more conceptually based. Others focus on line, color, texture, shape, form. So this display is an amazing showcase of the work that can be done by regional designers in Northeastern Pennsylvania. So this year we've added another layer to Art and Bloom. We are working with our partners at Scranton Fringe and they've curated a series of performances for you this evening. The performances showcase the emergence of spring and the invocation of Mother Earth. I just wanna say a special thank you to the performers from Farm Arts Collective, the Kala School of Indian Classical Dance and Breaking Grounds Poets for their interpretation of Art and Bloom. Hope you enjoyed the show. I was inspired by multiple aspects of this piece. However, I think the title Waiting was what most inspired me. It couldn't have been a more relatable way to sum up this past year, because really we've all just been waiting for something. Whether it was waiting for the next Zoom meeting to start, to restrictions to be lifted, virtual school to end, a dinner date, a drink with a friend, to monumental things like a hug from a loved one who you are unable to see, a family gathering, a vaccine, the list could go on. We have all just been waiting, hoping, and yearning for a sense of security and normalcy in this uncharted territory. In this piece, the two women are staring out into the ocean, seemingly waiting for something. As you watch them progress through the piece, they wait, but wait gracefully. Grace is something we all need to allow ourselves this year. We wanted to express the theme of waiting through our design. We therefore decided to make a progression of texture and depth. The muted and simplistic black and white was what stood out to us most and drove our choice for the color palette. We hope you enjoy. Hello, my name is Raven Maloth. I am based in Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, and I am a student of the Color School of Indian Classical Dance. It is based in Clark Summit, and then there's also um, studios in Scranton, Wilkesbury, and Binghamton. This art form, Bharatanatyam, it originated in the temples in India, the Hindu temples in India. So the dance that I'm going to perform today is a pure dance art form, and so this one will focus on the footwork and hand movements. Uh, the hand movements are what tells the story, and so something like if I'm going to go like this it's gonna be the water. And so we're telling a story about near a river or um, crossing a river or crossing some sort of passageway. Uh, so the hand movements and the footwork combined is how we tell the story. Learning this art form, it allows me to connect to my culture and my heritage, although I'm here. So when I go back, I'm not like a foreigner, but I have this connection to my culture and my country. I know that when I'm uh, performing, I'm showing the community something new. And I think that's the most important is just the exposure of something that they've never seen before. And then they can also get educated on it.
I selected Tete a Tete because I was intrigued by the two women in the painting, and I was also intrigued by the scene that they are set in. There's kind of a dark, mysterious, feminine vibe happening that I liked, and I thought it would be fun to try to recreate that story and that mood with flowers. Hi, my name is Tanis Kowalchuk, and I'm the Artistic Director of Farm Arts Collective, and this is Jess Beveridge, who's our company manager. And today we are presenting um, a theater performance, or an, uh, what I'm thinking of is a performance art piece, because we're in a beautiful gallery in a museum. And the performance is called Flower to the Power of Two. Farm Arts Collective um, started because um, we are a group of theater people who also live and work on an organic vegetable farm. And so I really wanted to explore the, um, the coming together of farming with, with theater and what theater would um, be like on a farm for people to experience different kinds of performances actually literally on a working organic vegetable farm and the farm's 30 acres and so there's like a lot of room to play with. During the day we tend the fields and we do our flowers and seed and do all of that amazing stuff and then at night we cross over the fence and we make theater which is really great so everything is integrated into itself and you're tending the fields that you're performing on, and it's, it's really a magical, magical place. The piece is really a reflection of the whole mission of the company, which is to really bring together the things that we do. We got all the pictures together and we said, well, why don't we do like A to Z, like all the different flowers that we grow A to Z. And then we came up with the idea of like talking about their medicinal and botanical properties after each flower and then showing the picture of the flower. And, it came together really nicely and now we have this like this educational piece about flowers and it shows the work that we do and all the flowers that we produce so it, it all ties itself together yeah it's fun and it was a lot of fun to put together it really was yeah blooming 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 Asclepius. Asclepius. Or butterfly weed is a milkweed native to North America and a traditional medicine of First Nations people. Not only is the flower a beautiful orange, it can be used to relieve inflammation and bronchial complaints. Asclepius is also monarch butterfly's favorite flower. Aster. Aster. Is native to China and Korea and has been cultivated for 2,000 years. We love using them in bouquets because they are puffy and softly colored and their pliable stems are very easy to work with. Bee balm. Bee balm. Or Menarda is part of the mint family. Other names include Bergamot and Oswego tea. First Nations Blackfoot and Ojibwe used bee balm for skin infections and minor wounds. It was also used as a tea for bronchial ailments and throat infections. Bupleurum. Bupleurum. Or Thorowax is an herb used in Chinese medicine. Bupleurum root is said to disperse qi and clear heat from the liver network. Modern science is investigating the effects of bupleurum on liver enzymes, mood, and immunity. But on our farm, we like to use the flowers as gorgeous filler. Calendula. Calendula is a member of the daisy family. Sacred in India, native to southwestern Asia, its antifungal and antimicrobial properties help prevent infection and heal injuries to skin and tissue. And best of all, you can decorate your birthday cakes with the pretty flowers and eat them too. Celosia. Celosia. A dramatic flower in the amaranth family, derived from the ancient Greek word kilios or burning. Native to East Africa, the Swahili word is mufungu. Solosia is eaten in Indonesia and Indian curries. And on our farm, we grow the cristata, the brain-like flower, and the spicata, the feather-like flower. Delphinium. Delphinium. Derived from the ancient Greek word meaning dolphin, delphinium is a member of the ranunculus family. This tall, stately flower in blue, white, and pink looks like it belongs in a proper English garden. It is not easy to germinate from seed, but well worth the effort. 
Eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is a genus of over 700 trees in the myrtle family. Native to Australia, in our flower field in Pennsylvania, we grow it as a green accent in bouquets. Eucalyptus has an incredible scent and it is one of our favorite plants to cut for its pure aromatherapy. Foxglove. Foxglove. Or in Latin, digitalis means finger. This biannual plant contains a heart medicine called digoxin, which is extracted from the various plants of this genus. Even though foxglove has medicinal uses, it can also be extremely toxic to humans and animals. Gomfrina. Gomfrina. Gomfrina globosa, or globe amaranth, is native to Central America. The little flowers are really great for drying because they keep their brilliant, intense color. And if you want to do some dyeing, the beta-cyanins in globe amaranth can be used as a natural food dye for a red-violet color. Iris. Iris. A beautiful perennial found in many home gardens here. It takes its name from the Greek word for rainbow. Nearly all species are found in temperate northern hemisphere zones from Europe to Asia and across North America. Larkspur. Larkspur. Or Delphinium consolida is a member of the buttercup family. We plant seeds every October in the greenhouse, making it one of our first cut flowers in late May. This plant is toxic to humans and animals, but these beautiful spray flowers are so worth the risk. Lavender. Lavender. Or Lavendula is another member of the mint family. It is found around the world in most temperate climates. Commercially, the plant is grown mainly for the production of lavender essential oils and ingredients for the finest fresh soaps and perfumes. Ooh la la! Lupin. Lupin. Or lupinus is in the legume family. The seeds of lupins are commonly called lupini beans and were popular with the Romans who cultivated the plants. Today, lupini is still eaten in Italy. But on our farm, the lupin flower is possibly the most incredible spring flower that we grow. Poppy. Poppy. We love growing poppies on our farm. Poppies are grown for many reasons, for opium, for bread seeds, and in our case, for their absolute beauty. Our favorite poppy, pictured here, is called the drama queen. Of, of course, course it is. is. Rudbeckia. Rudbeckia, commonly called black-eyed Susan is a flower in the family Astorcia, found in all 10 Canadian provinces and across the U.S. In traditional medicine, Rudbeckia was used on snake bites, burns, and open wounds. As a flower, it is possibly the most cheerful addition to any bouquet that we make. Salvia. Salvia is the largest genus of plants in the mint family with nearly 1,000 species. We grow an ornamental salvia called Blue Better which attracts bees all summer long. The name salvia derives from the Latin salvere, to feel well and healthy. We love it because it looks like lavender, but much easier to grow. Scabiosa. Scabiosa. Or pincushion flower. It sounds like a terrible skin disease. That's because in traditional folk medicine, scabiosa was indeed used to treat scabies, an illness that causes a severe itching sensation. Snapdragon. Snapdragon. Have flowers that resemble the face of a dragon that opens and closes its mouth when squeezed. On our farm, we plant snapdragons early in our hoop house because they favor cool temperatures and do best in the earliest weeks of summer. Our favorite varieties include Madame Butterfly and Rocket Mix. Zinnia. Zinnia. Symbolizes lasting friendship, goodness, and remembrance. We grow 1,800 zinnia plants each year on our farm, giving it the title, the workhorse of the flower farm. Zinnias are native to Mexico and they hate frost. So they are often the first flowers to bid us farmers a fond adios each autumn. Adios. So my inspiration, I'm taking from my painting that it is absolutely beautiful and intriguing and smart and well thought out 
and it's something so simple. It's a table, it's some items, and the colors speak for themselves, the style, the spacing, just all of that thought I want to put into my design. So I don't want to rely too much on bright colors, aesthetics, traditional floral design. I want to emulate the vibe that this painting casts, the tech that it uses, the thought, the style, and really go for that with the blooms I'm using, with the pot I'm using. I'm just trying to capture this art in the everyday normal life with style. So my design, I've actually taken inspiration from an architect turned florist in Philadelphia, Texture Florals. Her work is stunning and it really plays into a sort of style that isn't typical. We think vases, we see them, we see flowers in a bouquet, we see them tightly tied together, leaning on one another, and I want to make it airy and light and really play with spacing because my painting plays with spacing, so I'm going to be using floral foam in a very low um, terracotta clay pot. So it's going to look like the flowers are just existing in space by themselves, almost floating. So I think I'm taking the idea of spacing and style from the artwork that I'm emulating and putting it into blooms and it's not going to look like the painting in an arrangement. It's going to be taking all of the technical aspects used in this painting as well as some of the colors into my design and I want it to be shocking but yet so natural. I want it to feel like this is a perfect option just as the painting does. Hi, my name is Vivian Moyer. I'm a senior at Tunkhannock Area High School and I'm a member of the Breaking Ground Poets. The Breaking Ground Poets are a family, um, a safe space for anyone who needs one, and just a really supportive group of people who are willing to accept anyone. For me, poetry is an outlet. I really enjoy writing creatively, and when you write poetry, you can write the most creatively out of all writing, even more creative than creative writing. You can write in any style, you can write about anything you want, you can write from the perspective of someone other than yourself. You really can do anything with poetry. I wrote Ode to Yellow for a class assignment for my poetry class. Um, it actually ended up being my favorite poem though. I definitely prefer writing poetry. I have really bad stage fright and when I get nervous I forget things really easily. So writing is just easier for me, but I hope that I'll like performing it more one day. Performing here was a lot easier than I expected it to be, so I think I'm warming up to performing more knowing what it's actually like now. In eighth grade, I hated poetry because we only ever read poems from really old people and they were always really boring and we had to figure out so much stuff about them that just didn't make sense. So I didn't like it at first, but when I started writing it myself, I realized that poetry doesn't have to be the old ABAB rhyme scheme and stuff like that. It can be anything you want it to be. So I would definitely recommend at least trying it. I never thought I would like it and I ended up loving it, so. I used to hate the color yellow. Yellow was the color of mustard, the color of lemons. It tasted sour, but looked so sweet. Yellow was happy and bright and in your face, unashamed to be itself, what I wanted but couldn't have. A friendly and welcoming color that I was too prideful to give into. Yellow felt so warm that it burned my desperate fingers. There was never room to feel anything but happiness with yellow. An endless pool of foolishness and thoughtlessness. Yellow was carefree. And I was jealous of it. My veins were blue and icy. Sapphire intertwined with citrine as yellow forced its way into my blood. Sunflowers grew where the blue was overpowered, painting my skin like I was an empty canvas. And in a way, I was. I fought it, ripped the sunflowers out of my arms and left deep scars where the roots had buried themselves. The petals fell around me, twirling around my tired body like beautiful women in their blonde ballroom gowns. Dandelions and daffodils took the sunflower's place too quickly for me to stop them. Exhausted, 
I fell asleep, breathing in their irresistible scent. I woke up to sunset, streaming in through the window. My face was bathed in butterscotch. I opened my eyes and noticed that the golden warmth I had so vehemently despised no longer stung as it reached my blue skin and melted into it. My body was covered in flowers. Sunflowers, dandelions, daffodils, marigolds, chrysanthemums, primroses. My first thought was that I looked beautiful, and I had never felt beautiful before. It was as if heaven itself had descended upon me, and the sunlight formed a thin halo around my head. I surround myself in yellow now. I crave that warmth that only yellow can give. I want to be happy and bright and carefree. When I close my eyes while I sleep, I want to dream in yellow, speak in yellow, breathe in yellow. I want to feel beautiful like only yellow is. I want to sit on the porch swing in the sun and bask in its brilliance. I want to drink lemonade and savor the taste. I want to be with my friends and smile and feel yellow filling up the parts of me that have always been colorless. I want to learn to feel warm without burning and I'm ready to let yellow be my guide.